then check this out. Wait, I can make a million dollars working in tech? My first year? According to TikTok, you told me so. The tech industry is booming and it's no wonder that so many people are looking to switch into tech. And it's one of those things that you see there's flexibility, good pay, why wouldn't you want to switch into tech? And according to the report by CompTIA, I hope I'm saying that right, the tech related hiring contributed to the national growth of 400, well basically over half a million jobs in US last year alone. That's wild. And another factor along that is the number of jobs increasing has not decreased the salaries. Tech remains an industry where anyone can look forward to a good salary if you're willing to put in the work. Key is willing to put in the work. Tech jobs such as software developers, IT management, and systems analysts all have average salaries in a high six figure range. So all of these things considered, why wouldn't tech appeal to anyone? But there are some things that no one tells you about landing a job in tech. Some things that you might not learn until it's too late. Today, I'm going to share with you some things that I wish I knew when I was landing a job in tech, my first job, and as someone who recently went through the interview process, things that I still learn along the way. It can be competitive. And although there are so many jobs in tech, I just said that, and then now I'm saying it can be competitive. I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy. There is still so much demand, but the competition is really high as well. So anything you can do to stand out will really help you. Imagine when companies post a job resume or a job posting and you put in your resume, you are competing against hundreds, if not thousands of other people. And a lot of times the first person to evaluate your resume is a bot based on keywords you put in, based on uh, different kind of, well, basically keywords, but it's not even typically a real human evaluating your resume. Sometimes it is, but it just goes to show you how crazy this industry is. I know some people who actually write scripts that automate sending out their uh, resume to any you know uh, job postings on Indeed that have certain keywords. It's just bonkers. But there are some tips that you can do to really stand out. First, go to networking events. Get back out there. This can be in person or virtual. Some of the places that I go to look for virtual or in person really networking events include meetups.com, Eventbrite. Those are my two main ones. And depending on where you are located, this could either be in person. In Toronto here, there are great ones that they host in person or you can attend it virtually. This is a great way to really build connections because everyone is there for the same reason. They want to network, they want to learn about whatever the topic is, and you can really connect with them right on that. And this will definitely help you stand out from the crowd as far as you are showing that you are interested in these topics, you are taking initiative to get out there. And this goes a long way. It's something that's easy to do, but it really helps you stand out from the crowd. Having connections is so important in any industry, but especially in an industry where it's so close-knit. Although tech is a huge industry, people talk and they talk a lot. Imagine just how much you sit and talk with your friends and then they repeat to their friends and it's like a telephone and the words kind of get lost in translation. And I really wanted to point that out because it's so important to really have connections because a lot of times the reality is it's who you know. And I know that's kind of cringy to even say, but it's so true when you are getting a role into tech. The more you can network, the more people you can meet, the better off you will be. Because a lot of times someone will be like, oh, hey, I know so-and-so who'd be great for this role. Because it's one of those things that if you're applying for a technical role, anyone can learn technical skills, even if you're not the strongest coder, strongest technical person. But what employers are typically looking for are people who are willing to learn, who are really nice team players, who want to communicate with others and work well with others. And although it sounds pretty obvious, it's a huge thing that employers look for. And then I always hear the thing of, you can learn the tech, you can learn the tech stack, but learning how to be a good person and put in the work, that's something that I don't think an employer can really teach you. Second, work on side projects that you are actually passionate about. And I always get asked, well, Tiff, what kind of projects should I be building? I don't know what I'm passionate about. I'll give you a little example here. When I was learning how to code and I was building my first full stack web application and uh, it was a final project at the coding bootcamp I was at, they said, build whatever you want. So for me, what I decided to do was build a skincare app because I was really interested in skincare and thought, why don't I merge the passion I have for that with my passion for technology? So whether you are interested in sports, fashion, whatever the case may be, 
build a project around that. And a great idea to do that is see an existing project. So get inspiration from an existing project and you can take that and alter it into what you want to build. Obviously not copying it, but rather looking for inspiration through it. Side projects are truly one of the best ways that I was able to start off my career by standing out. And I made a bunch of little side projects. Well, one of my mistakes I did is I made quality over, no, quantity over quality at first. And I really realized when I was first starting out in the industry way back when, I feel like I need gray hair now, way back when, you know, but truly way back when, uh, I made quantity over quality because I just was like, I need to fill up my portfolio. Don't make that mistake. Do quality over quantity, even if it's one or two really good projects. Finally, consider creating an online presence for yourself. Blogging, creating videos, I know this isn't for everyone, but in whatever format you are comfortable, if you are willing to put yourself out there, share a little bit about what you are learning and your knowledge, it can really go a long way in opening up many doors for you. Now, this isn't to say you need to become a YouTuber or a social media person, but even if you do a blog once a month, once every two weeks about what you are learning, it shows that you are really taking initiative, sharing with others what you are learning. Tech is such an industry where we really encourage uh, people to share what they are learning, to teach other people. And if you are showing that you are doing that, it's another great way to, to really stand out. So having these kind of side hustles not only prove to employers that you are good at what you do, you are knowledgeable about what you do, what it also does is it shows that you're willing to take leadership and innovation. You're willing to put in the extra work, the extra effort. You're really passionate about the subject that you are learning or teaching about. And it goes a long way. As someone who is a content creator and recently went through the interview process, I heard from pretty much every company I was interviewing with uh, the praise or a po praise isn't the right word, but a positive about Tiffin Tech. Like, wow, you took initiative and did this on your own. Now, I'm not saying you need to go create a platform like Tiffin Tech, but what you do need to do is just be aware of how having a side hustle or putting yourself out there can really be a positive thing as long as you know you're putting yourself out there in a positive light. <laughs> okay, whew, that is much better in here where the AC is. The tech industry is often glorified for its high salaries, flexibility, but you really need to hone in on if this is what you want to do. Do you want to switch careers for the right reason? Because this is something you're going to be committing to for a long time. And if it is still something that you're really excited about and passionate about, you need to hone in on your skills and experience. Well, how do you get experienced if, if I've never worked in the tech industry? As I mentioned earlier, side projects, blogging, putting yourself out there really makes a difference and helps with experience. Going to networking events. It's one of those things though that I think a lot of times and it's our generation and younger that we want results now. We know we click a button and food gets delivered. We turn on TV, we can watch any movie. We want results now, but the reality is, if you want to be successful in the tech industry and grow your career, you're going to need to put in the work. You're going to need to put in the work of studying, of preparing for interviews, and when you get the job, actually work. I think a lot of times you see on social media these tech talkers or whatever being like, I make seven figures and I work a, you know one hour a day and I take five hours of naps. I'm not kidding you and I'm sure you can relate. I have seen videos like this. I'm like, where do you work? I want that job. I, I, that's very unrealistic. Uh, but at the end of the day, you need to put in the work and you will reap the rewards. Reap the rewards? Reap the rewards. Is it reap the rewards? Reap the benefits. Got Paul in the background here. And next up is don't take rejection personally. Wait, what? How is that even possible to not take it personally? Let me explain. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of tech is, and breaking into tech, it really helps when you know someone, when you have those connections. And it goes back to what we spoke about earlier with networking. And it's one of those things when you are going through the interview process, you're vibing with the interviewer, it's going great, you know? And you go through the whole process, you're like, I nailed that, I got this job, there's no question about it. Only to receive a letter a few days later saying, unfortunately, you know, we went with a different candidate. And you're like, what? How is this even possible? I have totally been there and one of the things that was uncovered later, and I think this happens a lot more than we realize, is it might be that the boss had a friend they wanted to hire. It might be that they decided to go with someone internally. There are so many factors outside of you that do not take rejection personally because a lot of the time, it simply has nothing to do with you. 
And that isn't to say this is always the case. It's very important to be aware of interviewing and why you were rejected or uh, told no at the time if possible. But a lot of the time it goes back to it had nothing to do with you or your skill set. It just wasn't the right fit for so many reasons that outside of what you could control. And this isn't fair, it sucks, I know, but it's the world we live in and it goes back to the importance of networking and building those relationships. And something that might actually be a bit controversial and I probably would have disagreed with early on in my career is to pick a boss, not a company. And you're like, well, why Tiff? I wanna pick Google, I wanna pick Facebook, Amazon, whatever, great as long as you are going to have a good boss or manager. So why is this so important? One second here. What I have learned is if you have a good boss or manager, they will really take your career to the next level. If you are at a great company but have a terrible boss or manager, the problem is they can either be holding you back or just don't really care or pay attention to you and in turn your career can suffer. If you have someone that you can look up to and that supports you in your career journey, it makes a huge difference in how fast you grow in your career. And alongside a boss, make sure you are aware of what the company culture is like before you start. Do they work, you know, 15 hours a day? Do they work Saturdays and Sundays? Okay, maybe not that extreme, but you get what I'm saying. Ensure you are really aware of what the company culture entails before you sign on to anything. Because the worst thing you can do is take a new role, think it's a great company, and then end up really hating your life and in turn, not putting your best work forward. And it goes back to how it affects your career. Tech jobs are looking more and more uh, impressive to people or people are really wanting to get into the industry, I would say every day, and it's becoming more in demand. So although there are so many more, so much more people getting into the industry, the demand is also there. The flip side of that, it can often seem quite glorified or, you know, as I going back to the salaries, making a million dollars your first year and, and having these unrealistic expectations. As long as you are aware of that and go in with an open mind, willing to learn and grow, you're going to do amazing things in this industry. These are just some things to really look out for and be prepared for that no one really wants to talk about. I hope you found this video very valuable and helpful. If you have any questions, leave down in the comments. I always answer every single question or I do my absolute best to and if you haven't already hit that subscribe button. Okay, I'll see you soon. Thanks everyone.